the Bruins rolling so far with Mick Cronin at the helm, should UCLA, when Amar Bailey is healthy, keep him on the bench and have David Singleton start, have them switch roles? Let's talk about it. Locked on UCLA. You are locked on UCLA, your daily podcast on the UCLA Bruins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, it's Zach Anderson, the Oxheimer, for this edition of Locked On to UCLA. Thanks for making it your first listen each and every day. It's free where we get your podcasts, and it's available on YouTube. Like, comment, subscribe. To start things off, the Bruins are now back in the top 10 with basketball. They are rolling 10 in a row, exactly ranked number 10. As we get you thinking into, hey, should McCronin, with Amari Bailey missing these last two games with left foot discomfort, as uh, reportedly from all the various reporters. Not sure what his availability is coming forward for the USC week, and then it's Utah-Colorado before the Arizona trip. So my thought is, should UCLA, when Amari Bailey is healthy, should they flip Singleton and Bailey into having Singleton in the starter's role, have him be more of an offensive presence in the first starter, and then have Bailey come off the bench and see if those two things can work? Does that make a difference? Can that jolt Bailey's offensive resurgence that we saw post the Illinois and Baylor losses. Well, for Bailey, as you can see, probably some sort of left. Maybe this is what's been bothering him, but Amari Bailey, the last few games he's played, coming in for UCLA, and while they've been winning, everything's been working. They did survive a scare in Pullman, taking down Washington State by one, which we'll get to, and then also beating Washington in beatdown fashion, going 2-0 and in the Washington trip over the New Year's Eve, New Year's Day celebrations, the Bruins, maybe they can benefit from a switcheroo of having a singleton over with an Amari Bailey. Maybe this isn't something that works long-term, but this is maybe potentially something that you do this, and this is another reignition of the flame to just kind of tinker with Bailey when he's healthy and fully 100% to get them right for when it matters for UCLA, which is in March. And while UCLA needs to improve the resume to become a potential one seed, if not a one seed in the West and usurp Arizona, who currently has that spot in the bracketology by the ever famous Joe Lenardi. Of course, there's various different brackets and rankings at the moment. Maybe they got to get things to get wins. And what do you need to be in Arizona coming up? Well, one, you have to play defense, but Arizona scores. So if UCLA needs to score some points, well, David Singleton could be in the starting lineup. And while that maybe doesn't change their minutes, maybe it's a reshifting of the focus for Mick Cronin because Amari Bailey, let's talk about these last few games for Mr. Bailey that he's played in, had four straight games where he scored 12 or more points, 58% or better from the floor, and of course, long, lanky, the left hand, that can be tough to guard when he's going right. He can play some tough defense, really re-energize the Bruins after Mick Cronin called them out after that Vegas tournament against Baylor and Illinois when the Bruins lost their only two games of the year. And, of course, that came from bad defense. UCLA gave up the only two times this season 70 or more points. And while Bailey is very physical, he can add to the Bruins defensively. Singleton is shooting 50% from the field and 50% from three, in addition to his 90-plus percent from the free throw line. Limited attempts, but 17 of 19. That's a guy you want shooting shots and shooting free throws if he can get there as opposed to Bailey, who has struggled this year from the free throw line. Bailey, who did have a nice stretch there with 12-plus points, then after the most recent double-digit scoring effort coming against Oregon, he then has gone four straight games played where he had less than 30% shooting, four and a half points per game, going eight for 28. While he's certainly effective in other marks, UCLA would love Bailey to figure it out going into the Arizona game in a couple weeks if he's healthy, moving things forward into later in the middle part of the season of the Pac-12, depending on when he's coming back, whether it's the upcoming week, the SC game, or whenever it is. Don't know when it is at the recording of this podcast. But for UCLA, maybe this is something Mick Cronin can certainly tinker with. My idea is maybe you don't want to tinker with it for the USC game if Bailey's healthy, but UCLA's got a Utah, Colorado, and ASU. These are all four teams between SC, Utah, Colorado, and ASU that are floating either 
on the bubble, in the bubble, off the bubble, or just off the bubble. Colorado isn't truly in anybody's radar. They are on the radar. They've had some interesting wins and some very interesting losses. ASU was ranked before then losing two in a row. SC is firmly on the bubble on the outside. Utah is on the bubble on the inside. So there's various ways UCLA can go to try and tinker this lineup to maybe get more production out of it, maybe just figure it out one way or another. And my thought process is, why not have potentially Singleton, who in his two starts over the Washington games and Washington State had 14 points, UCLA, you could say, all right, they're 3-0 and when he starts. Can't really fault Bailey on being the starting member of the team when they lost those two games. But maybe you want to add and kind of spread the floor a little bit early for UCLA offensively. Get Singleton hot. See if he's got that hot hand and get him maybe not just 14 points, but 20 points in a game if he ever gets hot from three that early in a contest as opposed to waiting for him to come off the bench. And if for some reason he's cold, you always have an Amari Bailey off the bench, which you don't want to mess with the mindset, but it seems like he's a confident young man. You have Mick Cronin who, you know, you can't talk down or back down for Mick Cronin who's always saying the right things and the perfect things and how he is lucky to have the UCLA job in his own quotes, right? Considering it is the seat of John Wooden. Well, maybe a, a big move, a maybe potential Pac-12 national championship winning move. Maybe it doesn't happen in March, but here in the middle of the season to focus and shift the lineup would involve sitting single, bringing Singleton in the starting lineup, which the Bruins did survive in Washington State, but he so far 50% for a third. You can't deny that's not a good number for Bailey, who hopefully, once he can click it on once again, will probably earn, in my mind, that starting spot, which he hasn't lost it necessarily, but just something to really mesh the team a little bit better based on what these two players have brought so far. And while the Bruins are seeing guys clicking, Hawk is outstanding. Tiger coming off his best game against Washington. Bona, well, we'll get to Bona in a minute. But UCLA could really maybe shift some things there by having Singleton and Bailey shift for a few games in the midst of the Pac-12. They don't play Washington and Washington State for a little bit. It'll be until, I believe, February before they play those two teams again. But this is an interesting stretch before the Arizona game in the near end of January when they play in the McHale Center, where maybe UCLA can shift things, all depending on the availability of Amari Bailey. Now, if he's out, and Singleton goes through a cold stretch, then obviously this all changes. This depends on the fifth-year player continuing his hot streak. We've already talked about how his numbers are even better, but 50% from the field, 50% from three, and 94% from the line. They talk about 40, 50, 90 guys when they do it either in a college season, in an NBA season, but he's doing 50, 50, 90, while Singleton doesn't necessarily put the ball on the floor and drive to the rim to get extra free throws to put that 90% to use for the UCLA free throw percentage. Still, that's someone you want on the floor in key moments. And if you get him more minutes, get him a couple of more shots. And if he's making one out of two from three, you'd like him to take that, at least this moment, depending on how long Bailey is out. This could be a good stretch for UCLA to see that happening. Well, it was a wild weekend from the heartbreak of football to the greatness that was UCLA basketball. Moving back into the, the top 10. And let, let's recap what was good, what was bad about those games. First with the Washington State game after we tell you about some LinkedIn jobs. Because, you know, we're now in 2023. If you haven't heard it already a million times, happy new year. But just know as a small business owner or a hiring manager, you want success in 2023. And that all depends if your team members you surround yourself with can be successful. Well, that's why you can have check out LinkedIn Jobs. With LinkedIn Jobs, you can hire those qualified candidates more efficiently by matching open roles with people who have the skills, values, and experience to help you achieve your goals as a small business owner or a hiring manager. LinkedIn Jobs can help it make easy make it easy to screen those qualified candidates, rate applicants based on job qualifications all on one platform. Small businesses, they rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Post your job for free again at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. Rolling on forward here with Locked On UCLA, kind of started things off with a potential hot take. Singleton for Bailey, depending on how things roll with Bailey's health moving forward, his availability with some left foot discomfort. Could that Singleton for Bailey switch 
maybe get some UCLA a better three-point shooter, even more of a score in the starting lineup, which Singleton has done so far, 14 and 14 at his most recent two starts. But again, there's so many other Bruins who have been good in these last two games, which we haven't talked about since we've last recorded an episode talking about basketball. Well, UCLA, they had that break from Davis to Christmas, and then now they went to Pullman, had to grind it out, right? A very peculiar Washington State team that came in about 5-8 and eight when they played the Bruins, and UCLA trailing the whole game. They were down one late in what led it to a UCLA victory, a steal, a poke up from Tiger Campbell, leading to an Adem Bona runout, who eventually was able to sh- score it based off a of goaltend, and then again, more defense, as UCLA watched Washington State one last heave at the horn, just clank off the back of the rim, and the Bruins survive against a Cougar team, who maybe maybe money many would not have thought that they could have even competed with the Bruins. But with Amari Bailey out, a starter out for the Bruins, you thought maybe that could have been the case, that a little lack of depth, which the Bruins do not have this season. They do not have a lot of depth. They can throw bodies in that can compete. When you miss a Bailey... And despite all my talk about Singleton for Bailey, you miss one of those two guys, then you're missing a lot of production, a lot of defensive orient, defensive orientation. This the the potential, I should say, of Amari Bailey is there each and every game when he steps on the floor. So when he's gone, some of these teams like a Washington, Washington State, those sleepy early conference games, when you're on the road, you want to get those out of the way and build yourself as the Bruins have, just win it one at a time and continue to build a resume, or in this case, not slip up and get a bad loss on your resume heading into March with bracketology slowly coming out towards the end of big, uh, towards the end of Pac-12 play. So UCLA against Washington State wins it by one. Bona gets the game winner. You had Jaime Hawkins Jr. with 20 points, Tiger Campbell with 16, Singleton, one of two 14-point efforts. And it's great to see in a road environment the Bruins come from behind and find a way to win a game where, you know, they, they truly, they, they, as they said it best in the broadcast, they somehow win this one. Somehow UCLA had the win. Somehow they had the lead. And it's like those games when they played against Baylor, and especially the Illinois game. How did they lose that game, right? Well, obviously, it played out that way, but they led by 15 in the second half, and you're like, oh, UCLA's cruising, and then they lose, and they're like, what? And Baylor was more back and forth, but it just kind of left you befuddled. This was a game where UCLA grinded it out, and it could be one of those dangerous recipes for success for an opponent to beat them in a March Madness scenario. But still, UCLA has the defensive tenacity where in these 10 straight wins, they have not given up anywhere near 70 points. Well, close to it with Washington State 67. In three of the last four opponents, they haven't even reached 50 points in a single game. But in all the Bruin wins this year, they've given up less than 70 points. In all their two losses, they give up more than 70 points. So with Washington State slowly creeping down, it took two late Bruin stops to keep Wazoo off the scoreboard and eventually a one-point win for the Bruins, which it's nice to stack up those close wins to get your team settled, and especially with the starter down, not one but two games over the weekend in conference. You want to get those close wins and build yourself for an atmosphere that might present itself in Arizona when it comes up, when you're playing in the Galen Center, when you host Arizona at home at the end of the regular season, building for a Pac-12 tournament, which is a second, if not third opportunity, to knock off some of these teams and bolster that potential one, two, or three seed resume the Bruins want this year with those quad one, maybe quad two wins. Well, it was good to see the Bruins have those good games. Jaime Hawkins Jr. is continuing to do what he does best. And then UCLA goes into Washington fresh off the new year in 2023, and they don't get any slower. They continue to build and build, and build, and do the right thing. And while Washington kind of had it close there, I believe 30-23, to 28-21, or 28-23, it was fairly close. Bruins eventually stretched out the lead to half by 9, 36-27, and then just thoroughly dominated the second half. Washington shot 2 of 25 from 3, and no, I've seen Washington in person. That number is not a fluke. They can be ice cold from downtown. And if you shut down Keith Brooks, the Kentucky transfer, then... While Braxton Mia, who had a good game in double figures, it's kind of going to show another reason why the Bruins could be scared down low in the paint. But then a Dembona, who on the other side for the Bruins in the Washington game, 
has really been a standout figure, which we'll get to in a moment. The Bruins found a way to outscore Washington by 16, continue to get points in the paint, dominate, and as Mick Cronin alluded to in those postgame conferences, 39 deflections a game. Defense, defense, defense. How do you keep teams off the scoreboard? How does Jalen Clark continue to get ridiculous steal numbers per game, two to three, like he's been getting these last few games? Well, 39 deflections a game is on average, reportedly, from what I saw. Ben Bolch tweeted it out based on what Mick Cronin was saying. 39 deflections a game during this 10-game winning streak on average without pressing. So that just simply means UCLA in the half court, or even in rare occasions in the back court, in, in the half court defense, the Bruins are just so long and lanky. of Bona deflecting the ball in a shot, finding ways with three blocks in the most recent game. Clark, who's just stealing the ball. Tiger Campbell, when the game was on the line against Washington State, getting in front of the pass, the Bruins force the turnover, leads to a fast break opportunity. UCLA wins, turns it into a wild, frantic last-second possession defensively against Washington State, keeps them out of rhythm, and they have to throw up a prayer of a shot. Although it's kind of open, the Cougars miss it. Maybe in March it goes in, but in de- January, in December of 22, it does not. And what you want to do is pride yourself on defense, which is what Mick Cronin does. And that's how the Bruins do it. Now, let's kind of wrap up this episode for Locked On to UCLA, talking about positives and what everybody loves going forward. One positive, one negative in terms of who played well this weekend, who didn't well. We're not going to go over Jaime Hawkins Jr. He's just balling out. Tiger Campbell, who did have his best game against Washington, 15 points, 11 assists, very good shooting percentage, only two turnovers. He's finding a rhythm, and you hope that continues into a rivalry matchup against USC. Again, the Pac-12 freshman of the, of the week, a damn bona game winner against Washington State. And while it was a goaltender, you can always, when you watch the, the big freshman move down the floor, watch a big man get down the floor and score a winner, albeit goaltend, it's always easy to do that. And then the confidence moving to the next game, 18 points, three blocks. And Braxton, May, he's a big body. That's a 7-1 body the Bruins might face depending on who they face. If for some reason they get matched up against Purdue, who's currently number one in the country despite their loss with a Zach Eady. You want to have a force in the paint that the Bruins can not only score with, but can contend defensively with, with physicality and athleticism against an opponent's big, whether they're undersized or someone who's 7-1, like Mia is. And while he did eat, did Mia against the Bruins, Bona put in his 18, showcased his physicality, and is growing into his own before our very eyes. So it'll be nice to see when you get the Bona and Bailey combination, those killer bees, those two freshmen, to make UCLA an almost unbeatable squad. When those two players are going to be playing well, if Bona and Bailey are outstanding down the stretch, UCLA will be tough to beat when it comes to March. If one of them's playing well, then certainly UCLA is a very good team. If both of them are struggling, then you, you need one of those two to be very good to try and move on. If both of those two click, which is what Mick Cronin and UCLA is bank is banking on to get those key buckets when it's not a Jaime Hawkins Jr. or even a Tiger Campbell or Jalen Clark, then you need those guys to get big buckets and big stops and big defensive moments down the stretch because maybe you have a guy like a Jalen Clark who struggled over the weekend. Jalen Clark, who is, I'm not going to say one negative spot, but had a sore spot those two games. One, Clark struggled to shoot the basketball. Four for 21, 10 points combined between the two games, although he did have eight points in one game. But to showcase how good Jalen Clark can be, even when he is struggling to shoot, four for 21 for a guy who had been emphatically much better when it comes to his shooting percentage from downtown and scoring with ease, about 16, 15 a game, when he leads the defense into easy offense, had three steals in each of the two games in the state of Washington. And against Washington, 11 rebounds. So for Jalen Clark, he's finding one of those ways. If he's not scoring the basketball, if he's not shooting well, he's finding ways to win, which is what a veteran leader does for the Inland Empire product. So for Clark, nice to see him kind of just grind, be that leader for the Bruins defensively, especially without an Amari Bailey on the floor and with the Bruins kind of stretched a little bit thin when it comes to going deep off of Mick Cronin's bench. Nice to see the Bruins can have a Jalen Clark, even when he's not shooting well, get boards, get steals, continue to do what he does best, play defense, and in some cases when he wants to light it on fire like he will soon, as I said in the most recent episode before the new year, 
Jalen Clark, in my mind, was the team MVP. When you're doing the tough things, doing the deep, playing defense, when you get those hands in the passing lanes, rebound, doing those tough defensive minded principles that Mick Cronin preaches, then you're going to be rewarded not only with playing time, success, but eventually easy buckets as those shots fall going down the four, going down forward into this season. So for Dembona, bright spot for him to see him become Pac-12 Freshman of the Week. You have Jalen Clark still working on things with his cold shot in Washington. Hopefully it comes back to him as the Bruins have a little three-game home stretch before heading out to Arizona. But again, this is key. UCLA is currently in the bracketology. Again, we're all using the Joe, Joe Lenardi model. model. You have UCLA as a Midwest two seed paired up with what would be a Kansas on the one seed on the other side. You'd play at home if you're in the Midwest in, as a two seed in Sacramento, quote unquote, in your home state for the first and second rounds, making it a little bit easier. As opposed to Arizona, who's the one seed in the West, Houston, who's a very tough two seed to knock off over there as a two seed in the West, and then Gonzaga, who is a three seed in the West and also is ranked ahead of the Bruins. So for UCLA to try and jump three teams, well, if you believe the pollsters who are ranked higher than them in the rankings currently to many minds across the country. Houston was already number one, depending on how the season goes these next couple of weeks, Arizona could finally maybe work their way to number one Gonzaga. If something goes crazy, despite three losses, they're ranked ahead of UCLA. Currently the Bruins need to potentially jump three teams throughout the rest of this season. And the one big game UCLA has left the two are the Arizona games which is at home and first on the road before a potential third meeting like last season in the Pac-12 title game. Again, UCLA, they still have to play a USC who's on the bubble, Utah's on the bubble, Colorado. And then you have the likes of everybody in the Pac-12 who's scrappy. You can never count out a Stanford if they're going to go do something crazy. Cal, well, they're kind of the bottom feeders this year, but Oregon, what if they get hot late? And whatever's falling off the top of my mind, you just have Arizona State. So many teams that are on the bubble for UCLA, for the conference, for Pac-12, on UCLA's schedule. So they're going to get UCLA's best shot. They just have to be ready and build for that moving forward with that Arizona game coming up, the USC coming game coming up. All key games UCLA must win if they want to move to a one seed in the West specifically, at least if they want to hold that two seed in the Midwest where they can play first and second round games in Sacramento at the very least, and have to travel so far during the opening weekend of Pac-12 play. In the meantime, we'll give you more football news, more basketball news. We'll get you excited for UCLA sports as this is going to wrap up Locked on UCLA. Thanks for support. Thanks for making it your first listen each and every day. It's free wherever you get your podcast. It's available on YouTube and available wherever you see it. Thanks for tuning in. Hit that subscribe button. Thanks for your support. Eight clap time, Bruins fans. And one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. U, C, L, A, U, C, L, A. Fight, fight, fight. This has been Locked On to UCLA. Go Bruins. And Happy New Year. We'll say it every day. Happy New Year. But go Bruins, more importantly.